the most boring NBA stars to watch. This guy's oblivious to how good it is. From LeBron James' acrobatic feats and Chris Paul's flashy passing to Kobe Bryant's lights-out shooting performances, the NBA is usually the most exciting league to watch. However, when you turn on a game with all-star forward Tim Duncan, you can't help but feel a little empty inside. You know there won't be many spectacular dunks or highlight reel plays, but you'll see how the game needs to be played. We've compiled the list of the top players ever to play the game, which often put us to sleep. So keep watching to the end to find out who we think is the most boring player ever. Don't worry, you won't fall asleep watching this video. Let's get started. Joel Embiid. The Philadelphia 76ers are considered one of the most dangerous teams in the NBA, and Joel Embiid is one of the MVP candidates for this team. His playing style, though, is exceedingly boring for the NBA. Embiid is excellent at getting to the free throw line because he understands the rules and how to generate fouls. So although most fans like seeing a fast-paced style of basketball with a lot of three-pointers and slam dunks, Embiid is constantly interrupting the rhythm of the game and going to the charitable stripe. Joel Embiid has also stated that he doesn't feel like an NBA player since he's not allowed to play back-to-back -back games, which may be why his performances are not as thrilling when he does play. He was outspoken about minute constraints and the team's conservative approach to keeping him healthy in 2017. He expressed frustration when he revealed that, I just want to feel like an NBA player, Embiid said, according to Keith Pompey of the Philadelphia Inquirer. I feel like I'm not an NBA player because I don't play back-to-backs. And although Embiid's enthusiasm is undeniable, it's what made him the franchise's face despite only appearing in 32 games in 2014, the team's desire to maintain its $148 million player as healthy as possible following a couple of season-ending foot surgeries and a meniscus tear is quite sensible. Andre Drummond Andre Drummond is so boring. Some fans say it's like watching paint dry. Now that's ruthless. You can argue about his high rebounds per game all you want, but now even the NBA has said enough is enough. Andre Drummond, you are not a starter. The Cavs were chastised for buying out Drummond, even though Drummond asked for the move and no one wanted to trade for him. Drummond was bought out, moved to the Lakers, and plummeted when no deals were made. We can't even fathom how annoying that must have been for him. Nobody wants a backup player for nearly $30 million. Drummond has signed a deal with the Philadelphia 76ers on a one-year minimum MLE contract to back up Joel Embiid. He doesn't get along with this man. Now you can consider how horrible the offers were for Drummond when you see him signing with a team whose star is a person he despises and enduring that for at max $5 million. That suggests that Drummond was not worth the hoopla and that Kobe Altman, for all of his flaws, was correct about Drummond. While Drummond was known for his double-doubles in Detroit, when it came time to trade him, the Cavaliers provided the finest package of assets. Brandon Knight and John Hansen were selected in the second round. That was all it took for a two-time All-Star and Defensive Player of the Year candidate. When a trade is that bad, it's time to admit the profit wasn't any better. The buzz completely sold us. We'd seen the statistics and were thrilled about his arrival. The Cavs still won that deal with the Pistons, but Drummond was not what he seemed to be. A good defensive player, but a bad attacking guy. He was routinely run off the floor by smaller lines on defense and couldn't make up for it on the offensive end of the court. Ignoring plays and taking the ball up the court himself or simply taking the worst shots conceivable. However, Drummond has demonstrated once and for all that empty stats indeed exist in the NBA. We've seen him play defense in the low post without a doubt. He can. The issue is that most attacking big guys no longer just post up. Guys like Jonas Valanciunas, Joel Embiid, and others can shoot a mid-range jumper as NBA guards did in the 1980s. Rudy Gobert Look at this, going up high, Gobert! Rudy Gobert's game is about substance over flair, but many fans fall asleep in watching his highlights. Rudy the Rim Protector is a throwback to the great big men of the past, but he lacks Shaq's domination and charm, Tim Duncan's skill, and Dirk's sharpshooting. Simply said, you won't see playgrounds jam-packed with children aspiring to be like Rudy. Of course, we're not saying the Stifle Tower doesn't belong in the NBA. Gobert is a fantastic player. He's been named Defensive Player of the Year three times, an All-Star three times, and has led the league in blocks and rebounds three times. There's a reason he's known as the French Rejection. So don't worry, Rudy, you keep doing your thing, and fans and teammates will keep finding ways to criticize you. After all, haters will always hate. 
Rudy Gobert may not be the most adored player in the league right now, but we're interested to see what this outstanding baller brings to the table next. We just hope he washes his hands first. Anthony Davis Three years ago, Anthony Davis sat in the same hot seat that Kevin Durant was in this summer, owing to a divisive trade demand that made him a summer headliner and an easy target for detractors. Though Davis's exit approach was awkward, especially at the beginning, he got his wish a high wattage partnership with LeBron James on the Los Angeles Lakers. James and Davis won the 2020 title together thanks to a mutually advantageous collaboration. The offense was led by James, the defense was led by Davis, and their combination of talent and athleticism overpowered the bubble competition. Davis possesses all of the qualifications required to be one of the faces of basketball. He's a first round pick who had a successful freshman season at Kentucky and earned an Olympic gold medal as a youngster. He's an eight-time All-Star for the NBA's most prestigious team, a smooth scorer, and a versatile defender all rolled into one. And he's still just 29 years old, younger than Shaquille O'Neal was when he split with Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett when he joined the Boston Celtics. Many fans have said that they occasionally take power naps when Davis plays. And Davis himself has stated, I think I suck right now. I'm not making shots. I'm not making free throws. Davis was unhappy with his performance last season, and we understand why fans don't take him seriously. Not to mention that he is literally always injured. He got fans calling him Anthony Day to Davis. But you've got this, champ. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, like the whole San Antonio Spurs team over the last decade, is not a particularly entertaining player to watch. He's perhaps the only top 10 player in NBA history that you wouldn't mind missing out on to witness a LeBron James or Kevin Durant type player. Since being picked in 97, the walking double-double has routinely provided the Spurs with 20 points and 10 rebounds every night, and he's just as entertaining to watch as C-SPAN, or another ESPN special spotlighting Tim Tebow's high school achievements. Despite his 20 points and 11 rebounds a game, you and your friends are not thinking, man, I can't wait for that San Antonio Spurs game tonight. Not unless you're Skip Bayless. All Duncan and the Spurs do is win, yet Timmy's core approach is sufficient to put even the most casual watcher to sleep. He's never been particularly athletic. Duncan is simply aiming for the easiest shot possible and relies on his fundamentals to do the job for him. Duncan can drive and chuck up a hook jumper, but it's his bank shot from as far out as 15 feet that's earned him the title of possibly one of the best 10 players to ever set foot onto the court. Duncan is simply just not an exciting player to watch. He's not here to amuse or entertain. He's here to perform his duties by winning games. We're positive Tim would rather have four rings than be remembered as an entertaining player. DeMontis Sabonis DeMontis Sabonis is a top-tier player, there's no doubt about that. He's perhaps the greatest player on the Sacramento Kings team and the closest thing the city's seen in a long time to an all-star. His style of basketball is just boring to watch and requires constant feeding in the paint. He doesn't hit threes consistently, he's a defensive liability, and he rarely dunks it. The Pacers have just been boring to watch since DeMontis became the team's focus. Sabonis was the Indiana Pacers franchise player before being traded to the Kings in the Tyrese Halliburton deal. He developed into a player with star potential and became one of the Eastern Conference's most skillful big men after already being traded there in his rookie campaign. Sabonis averaged 16.7 points, 10.7 rebounds, and 4.3 assists in four and a half seasons with the Pacers, earning him Eastern Conference All-Star honors twice in 2020 and 2021. Sabonis only played in 15 games for the Kings this season, but what fans saw was encouraging. Many of the fans, however, believe that watching Sabonis is not as exciting as they thought, and that he simply plays his own game for himself.